Hi everyone. In today's video, I wanted to show you the latest build of Obsidian version 0.16.2 that is just released for insiders and should be available for everyone soon. I also wanted to show you a solution to a problem that one of you has requested. So after some back and forth on my Twitter DM, I realized it will be much, much easier to show it in video. So Steve wanted to know how I handle notes which are linked to a certain geographic location. Before I do that, first, let's start with Obsidian. Obsidian out of the blue first dropped version 0.16, which according to them is way more than just a fresh coat of paint. Obsidian has essentially gone through an extensive redesign process to make the interface more robust, accessible and easier to tinker with according to the developers. They took this one step further by dropping version 0.16.2, which includes tab stacks. Let me show you what I mean. So as you can see, this is Obsidian version 0.16.2. I have done absolutely nothing to it right now. It's using the default screen. As you can see, it has the default theme right now. I've even changed the theme from California to the default because it's gorgeous and beautiful. You can see that there's something that's changed over here. Firstly, you can read the release notes. And uh, once you close that, you can see that there's a tab view now. So if you open something with command click, it'll open in, in a new tab, which gives you a lot more accessibility. And it's just a very beautiful experience, basically. Also, the icons have completely shifted and, you know, it's, it's made to look much, 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 much complete and more beautiful. Now, one more thing that they've just introduced today is if you click here and you select tag tabs, you get that. It's a new view and a new take on it, which is again gorgeous. And you can have again as many windows as you want. Sorry, I mean files as you want. Also, I think just a few months back, they released a new version where you can uh, have this, you know, pop out as well. So if you want to do that, I think it's uh, Alt, Command, Shift and click. So if you do that on the graph view, it pops out like this nicely. And as you can see, again, gorgeous view all around and it's completely frameless. So let's just close this. So let's take this to full screen view. Now in full screen view, you might be noticing that, you know, certain things are missing. So let's just unstack tabs for now. I like this view much better, but that also looks really, really, really good. And I've been using this view in my personal vault as well, and I'm in love with it. So as you can see, this is currently in live preview mode, but if you want to change that, you can go to settings and I think you go to editor. And over here where it says editor status, you can enable that. And once you see, once you do that, you'll see that there's a live preview mode that is uh, available here. So if you tap that, that will allow you to go into reading and it'll allow you to go into source and it'll allow you to go back to uh, live preview mode. Also, another quick way if you want to change that is you can go to, um, where are my hotkeys? Yeah. And you can just say toggle. And yeah, you can, you have that, you have the option for toggle reading view, which is currently set at command E. And if you want to go to toggle live preview or source mode, you have to set that. So if I was just to do command E, it'll go to preview mode. I can't edit this anymore. Let's go back to live preview mode. Okay. Now, before I get started on the second half of the quick tip, I just have to do some in-house maintenance. So. Let's click on settings, uh, code plugins. I think slash command is turned off. Yeah. So I'm just going to enable slash command. What this allows me to do is if you are familiar with command pane, which is command P and you have all these options underneath it, that now, like if you're familiar with something like Notion or Logseek, you can just do a backslash and it will allow you to access the menu inside it. You can do that here as well now which is pretty handy and I'm getting too accustomed to it. So I'll keep that on. Okay. So the very first thing we'll do is we'll go to settings and we'll go to community plugins. Now we only have templater here. I'll just search for map view. Not here, obviously. 
So we click browse and I'll search for map view. So as you can see, there's this map view plugin by ESM. So we'll just tap that and we'll say install, installing map view. Okay. Done. Let's enable it. And that's all that you have to do. Once you go into the options, you have a lot of options here. You can even use Google uh, Maps basically, but API key will be required. So let's just stick to OpenStreetMap right now and open the same pane. Okay. Template file path. As you can see, there are loads of options that you can, you know, configure and move around over here. They've also added marker icon rules. I've been using this for a while now and I'm not, I, I, I'm, I've completely skipped this. Thankfully, I've seen it here now, so I'll be using it later. Okay, let's see how to use that now. So all you have to do is say if I had a new note, let's say my new note was New York. So if my friends had specified, you know, some nice places to hang out in New York or some nice restaurants, all I can do is I'll open map view and I can drop a pin here. So I'll search for New York. And I can just right click over here and I can say copy geolocation as front matter or copy geolocation. Now, also what you can do is there are lots of options that you have. So you can choose to create a new note here in line. You can choose to create a new note here in front matter. You can even copy the geolocation. So if you have an existing note, basically what this does is I already have an existing note. So I can't, if I created a new note here, say for example, Philadelphia, if I create a new note here, now, as you can see, Philadelphia is created. And if I tap this, it'll automatically immediately take me to Philadelphia. So if I had say, uh, I mean, I can just think of Philly cheese steak right now. I think I'm too hungry for some reason. So if you just put chili, Philly cheese steak or whatever, you know, and let's call this Philadelphia. Let's just save Philly to save time and it's done. It's saved. So the note is created. Now, if I go back to map view, you can see Philly note is there and my Philly cheese steak is visible as well. But what about the notes that I've already created? For example, New York. What if, you know, I already have a lot of information on New York and I want to access that. I can just go back to map view. I can search for New York. I can obviously search for it here as well, I think. But what you do is you come to New York, you right click over here and you can copy the geolocation. So there are two ways to do, go about it. You can either copy the geolocation. So if you copy the geolocation and let's open New York on a site pane because we can. So new tab. Now I've just added that here. So if I go back. I can access that location here via the note, but the note is not reading it. So to make it basically to tell map view that this note is connected to that location. What I do is I come back to map view and I come back to New York. I click, we just copy geolocation as front matter. You go to New York and I'll just paste it here. Now that that's done it will automatically show up over here as well. So if you see New York is written over here and it's appearing here as well. So if I was to write a uh, Statue of Liberty, this time let's stay away from food. And I go back to this, you can see Statue of Liberty is over there. So that's how you essentially create, you know, like if you see my own personal vault, I have uh, notes for all the trap, you know, wherever I travel, all the restaurants I visit, all again, I don't know what's up with the food theme today, but all restaurants I visit, all nice places to, uh, you know, visit and things that I remember of that location. I'll keep saving it onto Obsidian, my second brain. And all I have to do is I just have to click on the note of that location. For example, Dubai, if I wanted to go back to Dubai and, you know, figure out which is a good coffee shop or a good, or a good place to buy, say, hookah, for example. I can just come over here and, you know, I definitely will have some notes here on the best hookah places. So that'll also pop up over here automatically. So that's how you basically handle 
geolocations in Obsidian. And it's a brilliant plugin and I use it all the time in my personal world. So that's all for today. If you need help with something that isn't covered by someone else, please leave a comment below and I'll try my best to cover it. Obsidian has come a long, long way and I can't wait to see what they introduce next. As always, if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like it. And if you want to be notified whenever there's a new video, just click the subscribe button and the bell icon. Thank you so much.